Hello everyone, this is Ashley Rose from Mozilla Tamil Nadu. On behalf of Mozilla TN and VR Savvy, I am pleased to welcome you all to the fifth webinar of Foss Week. To all the new buddies joining us for the first time, I would like to briefly share a few words about Mozilla TN. Mozilla Tamil Nadu is a group of volunteers who are passionate about Mozilla related technologies and various open source projects. They work with the goal of spreading technology to all the extents. FOSS Week is a webinar series initiated by this community. We invite subject matter experts and long-term contributors from different organizations who are interested to give back. We have already conducted four web successful webinars on different projects like Common Voice, Wikipedia, Wiki Commons, and JS Inside Modern Web Browsers. The recording of these are available in our YouTube channel, so please do go ahead and have a look into it if you have missed our webinars. This is our fifth webinar, which is about building your own Instagram filters. Yes, Instagram AR filters. We are happy to announce that this webinar is in collaboration with We Are Savvy. We Are Savvy is a startup. We Are Savvy stands for Visualization Redefined by Savvy People. Best solutions are attained when problems are visualized from different perspectives. They operate across three verticals and end risk enrich businesses through their technology, marketing, and XR expertise. As the speakers for the day, we have two people. One is Santosh Ishwaran. So he is a co-founder of VR Savvy. He is known for professional expertise in programming, electronics, and automation domains with updated and pragmatic knowledge in spheres pertaining to Internet of Things, cloud computing, big data analytics, and app development. The other is Prashant. He is an XR developer as well as a 3D designer in VR Savvy. He is an experienced developer with demonstrated history of working in virtual reality industry. They both are into developing different AR filters based on their client needs. And today they are with us to share with you all how to create your own Instagram AR profiles. So without any further delay, I'll just rush up through certain guidelines that has to be followed during the webinars. First thing is, please do answer the polls that are shown during the event. Even now, if you go into the polls tab, you will see two polls created. This is just for the understanding of our audience in about what, what type of audience we are going to talk to. Second is about the session. It lasts nearly for one and a half hours. And after that, we'll have a QA session. Third thing is, it is a recorded session. So we encourage you to post your queries in the QA tab, which is on the left side of your screen. This query will be answered by the speaker after their talk. In case if you feel like you need to voice your question, please do use the option raise hand and drop a message to us in the QA tab stating that you need to ask the question. So after seeing your hand is raised as well as you have dropped a message, we will give you a chance to voice out your question at the end of the session. But again, I would like to mention that is a recorded session. So we encourage you to post your queries through QA tab. And finally, about the recording, the recording will be available in our official YouTube channel in a few days after the session. So without any further delay, I'll invite Prasha, uh, I'll invite Santosh to take over the session. Hope you all enjoy it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, good evening, guys. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen shortly. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Do everyone able to see my screen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So today's session is about augmented reality and uh, augmented reality based stuff. And uh, me and Prashant will be presenting today. Uh, and uh, I'll be speaking about what are the different frameworks available and what are the uh, development methodologies, what are the types of AI, and what is the market we are predicting in the upcoming years that I'll be presenting. Uh, Prashant will be taking care of the hands-on session of how to create an AI filter. So, so it will be split as uh, first 20 minutes uh, will be me and the rest of the session will be taken care by Prashant. So, so the agenda is uh, what are the types of AR available and how to choose your AR development framework or tools. There are n number of tools using which you can develop your AR content and the domain specific market predictions in AR and 
that will be the one of the session and uh, getting started with spark ai yeah so uh, i am uh, straight away jumping into the session uh, so i am going to speak about what is the types of ar so uh, the types of ar which i am showcasing here will be based on how a ar content is triggered for example uh, there is a a uh, virtual person need to come uh, from an ai uh, a filter or a app or kind of thing anything for that sort of matter based on the trigger methodology ai is been classified into a uh, few types so uh, i'll be uh, covering up those and uh, i will also say you some examples of certain things so you can relate to that which you have uh, already experienced uh, in the coming days yeah uh, and uh, how to choose your ai development framework i'll be speaking about that also so uh, let's uh, get started before getting into the agenda i like to give a small intro about vr savvy technologies vr savvy technologies uh, uh, do we do uh, uh, call it as visualization redefined savvy we work on all visualization technologies vr ar mr and iot dashboards etc so uh, that is in short about vr savvy we have got uh, best innovation award uh, in a event called as indian smart grid week uh, uh, by ministry of power and department of science and technology and we got recognition from uh, austrian ministry uh, uh, also uh, in the year 2017 and uh, that is in short about vsv we work with manufacturing industry we work with marketing agency especially for ar filter which you are going to see right now we work with multiple marketing agencies to develop uh, ar filters and uh prashant will be showing one of uh, such example everyone know right uh, that uh, today's trend is like uh, uh the gibberish uh, guess the gibberish even right now uh, last week i guess sony music have uh, released uh, uh, guess the gibberish kind of thing so that kind of ai filters uh, is the thing which is going on uh, by now uh, we develop for uh, top brands and uh, we develop ai filter for top brands and companies so uh that is in short about uh via savvy uh and yeah getting into the session so as i said before ai filter is basically classified based out of how it is uh, not ai filter alone all the ar experience you are seeing is basically classified based on the how the ar experience being triggered yeah exactly uh, that is what uh, i thought of mentioning you uh is my voice clear can i go ahead and uh Prashant, is my voice clear or someone else? Yes, bro, it's bro, it's clear. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, the market-based augmented reality application is like uh, if you have some books or if you have a, a pamphlet or if you have a brochure, if you scan that, if there is a 3D content which is coming out of the uh, marker, it is called as market-based AR. Uh, I can give you this way: what is augmented reality? Is augmenting a 3D object or a 2D object? on top of the real world is called as augmented reality so right now we are augmenting the 3d object on top of a uh, pamphlet booklet or something like that a, a, a printed paper kind of thing so that is called as market based augmented reality application so why i'm saying this is like these jargons will be used by prashant here uh, mostly today we'll be see, seeing uh, one or two types of uh, ar filters where uh, this is coming in and second is markerless plane detection based augmented reality uh, for example many would have used the snapchat filter where a boy come in and uh, do a small da dance or something like that or a, uh, uh, play a guitar or something like that right where you have to detect the floor and or a plane surface where a 3d augmentation of a object or a character or a animal or a plant will come in right so that is called as marker layer and plane detection based augmented reality one thing which i like to add is like uh, if you go to your google uh, search if you are, if you have a latest model mobile phone if you go to your google search and if you search for a tiger or a horse or a teddy bear or something like that you will get a option stating that view a tiger in 3d Uh, so this is advancement which i'll be speaking little later so uh, what is that is like uh, even in the search results ar based suggestions are uh, coming up started coming up we'll be discussing more on the topic little later in this upcoming slide so uh, the thing which i thought of addressing is markerless plane detection based augmented reality is like uh, it will detect 
uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption. So uh, the markerless plane detection based augmented reality uh, is a thing where uh, we can detect a vertical as well as horizontal uh, plane. For example, consider you have a, a wall and you want to change the color of the wall. We can have a vertical or horizontal, uh, uh, sorry, uh, vertical uh, plane detection and horizontal plane detection. So we will be seeing about the jargons a little later of this slide. Here. So that is the second type of augmented reality application. So uh, if you use these jargons uh, in any of the session, uh, then people will know uh, what you are speaking out. So marker base is one thing, markerless is second. So third is a uh, 3D superimposed augmented reality. So uh, most of the AR filters you are using right now uh, on nowadays is called as uh, 3D superimposed augmented reality applications here. Can you see something here, right? Uh, something like a lens cart application. In your lens cart application or a Facebook filter or something like that, if you wear a schooling glass, it is superimposed or augmented on top of a uh 3d object or something like that for example in facebook you have face filters right where you can wear a glass or you can have a bunny like uh, uh image on uh, on your head or something like that right so that is called as uh, 3d superimpose there are different types of applications the 3d superimpose uh, uh, thing is used uh so i'll be speaking about that and mm, so that uh, in 3d superimposed type of augmented reality itself we can classify further uh, the same kind of thing into multiple uh, split up something like face detection based tracking 3d object detection and tracking human body detection and tracking so uh, so first it will detect the human face and it will augment a 3d object on top of a uh, face a real face and similarly yeah, you can also detect a 3d object and add uh, uh, augmented uh, reality on top of a real object then it is called as uh, 3d object detection consider uh, you have a, a new iPhone. If you scan a new iPhone using a AR filter, and uh, in AR filter there is no 3D object detection option available. But I'm saying uh, for uh, for normal AR AR uh, content, if you scan uh, your uh, uh, mobile device or your laptop for that matter, if you say more information about that laptop, how to repair or something like that, so you have to detect the laptop and its positions and uh, its uh, screws, etc. Then it have to give a 3D augmentation. Then it is called as 3D object detection and tracking. Then uh, human body detection and tracking. The complete human body can be detected and uh, that can be a 3D augmented objects or something of that sort. So. Uh, then it is called as human body detection and tracking. So maybe I'll show some examples. Face detection and tracking is most of the uh, air filters predominantly use uh, face detection and tracking. Uh, for example, you have you can have a face detected and uh, there'll be a 3D object overlaying on top of your uh, on your glasses or something of that sort. Uh, and that is one thing. And other than that, you uh, this is for uh, human body detection. Your hand is detected, a complete hand. Uh, in human body detection, there are multiple options available. For example, in air filter, you have hand tracking, but you don't have a, a complete body tracking. But uh, you, the hand is tracked, and there is a 3D superimposed layer where you can see how your bone looks inside your hand or something like that. So this is a superimposed uh, uh, augmented reality application, which we are saying. So as I said, augmented reality is augmenting a 3d or a 2d object on top of a uh, on top of a real world uh, bodies or something like that is called as augmented reality and uh, here is a 3d detection based augmented reality here it detects the motor and it's augment uh, uh, 3d content on top of a motor or something like that or a pump or anything of that sort then it is called as 3d detection based augmented reality application so uh, so I, these are the three uh, uh, types, and then the third type, uh, then the fourth type is location-based engine. Uh, maybe uh, you uh, people here would have played uh, Pokemon Go, right? So Pokemon Go is a location-based engine. So uh, for example, uh, if you are in uh, uh, in a metro uh, Gindi Metro railway station, uh, that need to be an augmented content stating that you have to. Uh, be uh, away, uh, uh, you a little away from that yellow line. You should not cross the yellow line. So uh, there is a virtual person coming in and explaining you about the rules of uh, being safe in the metro train example or something of that sort. 
then it is called as uh, uh, location based uh, triggering up so all the four which i am saying here uh, is based on when the augmented reality should be uh, triggered so uh, almost all the things uh, works in a way that uh, uh, for example if i am saying as a coder so first it will detect a uh, image or it will detect a plane or uh, either vertical or horizontal uh, then it augments a 3d object on top of it then uh, superimpose in superimpose it will detect a face uh, or a human body or a, a predefined 3d objects uh, and uh, it will augment the thing so uh, the content is triggered when the 3d uh, or when the when a face is detected or when a hand is detected or when a 3d object is detected which is predefined so uh, then is uh, while you are going to a particular location if your gps location matches the augmented reality trigger then it will uh, augment a 3d object which comes in front of you and which helps you to understand the uh, environment or something like that sort uh, like uh, pokemon go or recently uh, tamil people over here would have seen uh, hero movie right uh, hero movie launched the mobile app for uh, uh, something like uh, finding the uh, hero movie uh, emblem or something like that in the surrounding similar to pokemon go they have released one app so this is a location based engine trigger so uh, this is one type so these are the majority classifications i am uh, putting up and there are multiple other classifications which is also available so that is one thing which i thought of addressing you yeah so before uh, uh, so the next thing which i want to address here before getting into the technical part is uh, market predictions uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, the organizer can uh, create a poll how many of you uh, uh, know what is a uh, future uh, how, what do you think the future is all about uh, in augmented reality uh, in augmented reality do you think uh, uh, it will be more used uh, in product uh, showcase or it will be more used in education purpose or something like that so the market predictions are like uh, if you closely look at the development phase uh, of augmented reality in multiple aspects uh, if i say uh, whether ar is bigger or vr is bigger or mr is bigger in my perspective ar will be the one which will be reaching the hands of millions of people more quicker than vr or mr so i think uh, the future of market is very high and very uh, predictable and uh, not predictable i'm saying very uh, very potential uh, is uh, in this situation why i'm saying that way uh, if you can uh, go google for example i have put up an image of a, a google search i have searched it, uh, tiger can you see here uh, uh can you see here can you see here uh, there is a uh, meet the life size tiger up close as an image here you can right now open your uh, phone and you can go to a chrome browser you can search it you will get a uh, view in 3d option here something like this and one more thing which i like to add is like uh, if uh, right now with the end of the session you know how to develop an ar filter and publish it on your uh, uh, instagram account or facebook account so uh, while publishing there will be option like uh, put it on facebook filter put it as an instagram filter put it as a facebook ads so if if there is any marketers or uh, business owners available online one thing which is predominantly shows here right if you search in a google console uh, ar content is coming up and in facebook there is an option to put your ar content as ads uh, so consider these two and one more thing is like uh, amazon i'll be talking about amazon's uh, uh, amazon's directions towards uh, ar and other things amazon has some platform where you can update your uh, ar contents very simply for even a normal shop owner can upload ar filter they are bringing up in that way but right now it is little bit complex but they are working on to develop and uh, for example in ar and vr you can upload a 3d content like a a uh, toy or something like this a toy or uh, uh, or uh, uh, or a dress or a computer everything and so so these are the three market leaders right google amazon and uh, facebook so they are bringing up the ai content why why what is uh, what this is significantly saying is like uh, i am searching tiger and i am getting a tiger in a search list and if you go and search uh, ai based seo 
that is one thing which is uh, google and uh, facebook everything everyone is working out for example uh, in future uh, for example uh, the people the marketers over here if you have if you are a marketer or if you are a digital marketer if you are a marketing company based people i like to add one point uh, your seo algorithm is based out of uh, text uh, when it come uh, when the google search engine came then the second algorithm is like uh, uh, if you have images and videos that is also considered for uh, pushing your content up if your website has good images and videos that is also pushing up and one thing which like to add is like uh, google is going to rank the websites which has a 3d content a yeah content up high so uh, slowly the market of yeah content creators uh, will be booming up in that way and one more thing is like i've added a link here uh, if you uh, if you are okay you can uh, open the link anytime and uh, using this link uh, you can for example recently uh, oneplus oneplus due to this covid they have made their unboxing of the latest oneplus model using an ai filter which can be experienced in your instagram nowadays so so uh, and one more thing is like uh, uh, one thing which you can come across is like uh, you have right now uh, uh, facebook uh, recently launched uh, that uh, uh, e-commerce kind of setup inside facebook and instagram right so uh, even uh, what we are predicting is like the, the the development methodology which you are going to learn now uh, will be useful that also uh, we are predicting that uh, even you can add a ar based content to your products which you can sell in uh, instagram or facebook uh, e commerce platform which is coming up nowadays so that is the region which we have come uh, saying that will come up so the content creation for ar will be more high in the upcoming days so it is good to learn that uh, that is what we thought of uh, presenting you now uh, and yeah so facebook ads is also coming up for this way and you can also see after uh, oneplus launching an ar filter to unbox uh, oneplus another company like vivo and uh, oppo i think uh, some of one have also released an application of that sort and yeah that is what i find. I, I want i thought of saying it google map also developed a uh, um, ar based map but it is not yet released but uh, it is coming up the way i think it will come in next google io uh, so that is one thing which we are predicting so uh, uh, this is a market i think with, uh, in which ai will be going very high uh, very soon maybe in the 2020 2021 in that area uh, so uh, that is what we predict uh, there are other areas like education etc so uh, education industrial applications etc but what we think is retail uh, retail and uh, uh, wholesale dealers and uh, product visualization is the area and uh, product marketing is the area where ar will go high uh, that is what our prediction is all about so uh, i have more 10 minutes to go uh, before getting into uh, uh, hands on development i also want to uh, showcase you the different ar framework engines which is available in the market okay uh, okay so these are the ar frameworks or engines uh, which is available in the market so uh, these are the things you can develop ar so uh, for example before you have uh, if you want to develop a, a mobile application you have develop a different frameworks uh, like react uh, uh, flutter or a native android application development method using java or something like that right similarly ar also have different options available in front of you so you can choose a framework or tool i cannot say this is always a framework there are some tools also uh, today we are use, going to use a tool to develop an ar so i'll be uh, uh, prashant will take care of that so before getting into that these are the uh, frameworks which are available ar kit is by uh, ios uh, and ar core is by uh, google uh, it is uh, ar core is open source and euphoria is by ptc it was initially by qualcomm they are the forerunners uh, uh, in ar industry euphoria is the pioneer in ar industry before all these people coming in uh, so euphoria is the a uh, fast one to uh, be in the ar market as a commercial product or license or something of that sort and wikitude wikitude is uh, also another ar framework which will be seeing uh, and arjs uh first of all i like to thank uh, mozilla group here why because we are savvy on initial days does not use any of these frameworks uh, for developing ar on vr we use arjs arjs is not directly a uh, uh, thing but 
But the thing is, uh, Airframe, Airframe is an open source contribution by uh, Mozilla and its enthusiasts. So uh, using Airframe and ARJS, we started developing our ARJS application and we developers demonstrated our core product, CATZ, which got national recognition across the world, is developed using this platform, uh, ARJS. But uh, uh, but it is not competing enough right now, but uh, we are also working on it. Uh, there are people working on it to make it more competitive. And a tool is one thing, and Amazon Samarian Lens Studio and, and Spark Air. The thing, uh, what is the uh, different options? Uh, in short, if I can say, ARKit is by I, uh, and Apple, so it works only for Apple. AR Core works on only the latest mobile phones, uh, limited number of support, but right now it is picking up very fast. Uh, it works on almost 60%. When, it, when AR Core is launched, it worked in just four or five phones. Initially, right now it has n number of phones, which is capable of uh, working on Airco. Euphoria works on all mobile devices across the range, and it has multiple functionalities. And uh, similarly, Wikitu, which runs on almost all the uh, uh, mobile phones or something like that sort. Uh, but the thing is, both of this is paid, and they are heavily paid, which is a factor which is pushing them away. Uh, and ARJS and eighth one. Uh, web developers over here, it is a platform for you. ARJS and 8th Wall is a web based AR development uh, framework or something, uh, tool kind of thing. 8th Wall, I can say they have tools to develop your web based AR kit and they are also having a uh, framework uh, for using which you can develop your own uh, AR application or something of that sort. So, ARJS is also one of that sort. So, if you are a web developer, if you want to develop a web based VR, Sorry, web based uh, AR, then you can go with ARJS or 8th wall. And one more thing is like AR kit and AR core is also uh, has a web based uh, capabilities. Uh, and Wikid, uh, Amazon has a web based uh, uh, options, but these two are pure web based. Others has an option to publish in web. Uh, that is the thing which I want to add. Uh, Lens Studio and Spark AR, this is a tools. This is purely tools. And Amazon is also a purely tool based of system. I've not, uh, I've not worked much in Amazon Samarian, but I have touched a few times uh, Amazon Samarian. So uh, at that, I'm not going to speak. So Lens Studio and Spark AR is like, uh, if you are a snap, if you want to create a, a snap filter or a Snapchat filter or something like that, you have to use Lens Studio. Lens Studio have a user interface using which you can create uh, filters which you are seeing in uh, uh, Snap Studio. It is, uh, uh, sorry, Snapchat. So it is developed by Lens Studio. Spark AR, which is we are going to have an hands on experience today, will be uh, uh, using Spark AR. You can develop uh, things, uh, the AR filter, uh, which is used in, uh, uh, in your uh, Facebook and Instagram filters. That is one thing which I like to add. So these two are for uh, social media platforms. All these are uh, uh, development platforms. So uh, one thing which I uh, maybe. Uh, I, the one of the agenda which we are uh, speaking about, like uh, how to choose uh, your uh, AR development framework, right? So I have spoke about domain specific and types of AR. The, how to choose your AR framework is a little bit tricky. It is totally, uh, it is not a developer based option. I, I'm listing out the options is like uh, based on your application. For example, I was saying about uh, human body detection and tracking, right? So it is possible only in few frameworks, not all frameworks support that. And face detection tracking, it is supported by only few uh, few more of the frameworks which I'm showing here. Yeah. So, and one more thing is like plane detection tracking, it is almost available in almost all platforms except except uh, ARJS, I guess. ARJS does not have a, a plane detection and tracking. Uh, that is one thing which I, I thought of adding you. So uh, market base is available. So uh, we will be discussing about that. I have put up as a uh, tablet column. So uh, how, how how we can, uh, for example, if your application want to work on majority of the phones available across the market. So if you are choosing the platform based on that aspect, then you can uh, you can get along this. For example, uh, AirCore works on almost all OS, even in iOS. Uh, ARKit, no, only iOS. Euphoria, yes, on almost all mobile OS. Wikitude, almost all mobile OS. Eighth wall, it is it runs on web. So if you have a, a compatible web browser, latest web browser with enablement of AR, then it will work fine. ARJS also works in the same way. Uh, and in this, uh, these three are priced. Uh, but for development, start developing, it is free. For testing, it is free. 
uh, but if you want to go for commercial way of it it is cost uh, cost you have to pay for the license other than that uh, for support uh, everything is free uh, air core air kit is free uh, and uh, the thing is free but the thing in air core right? then you can say can i choose air core for almost all devices yeah you can choose almost for all devices but the thing is like uh, it works on only latest phones can i say it will works from uh, 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 redmi uh, note 7 pro or from that side from that area of the redmi and uh, uh, from one plus six it will work so something like that before that if the, the phone is a little bit outdated it is not going to work so that is the only thing which air core has set back and Markerless tracking is available on most all uh, uh, all the platform except uh, uh, yeah JS marker based tracking is available in almost all platform. 3D object detection and tracking is also available in almost all platform. Uh, not 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 almost all platform. Yeah, Kit, Euphoria, and Wikidude does uh, process that, and that is the thing. So if you want to develop an application which detect a 3D detection and tracking, then you have to choose that way. Face detection and tracking, uh, Euphoria and Wikidude does not provide face detection, uh, and ALJS does not also provide face detection. Based on that, you can choose body tracking. Uh, so body tracking. Only AR kit is providing that partially right now. If my uh, my understanding is clear, and uh, that is one thing. And location tracking, uh, Wikitude and Euphoria, it is directly available in AR code in AR core and AR kit. You can also develop by yourself uh, if you are a good developer in that. And 3D pa third party integration uh, is easy in uh, AR core and uh, Wikitude. Extended tracking is what is my extended tracking is for example. Uh, I am having a, a paper, a paper uh, proof is augmented reality content is triggered. After the content is triggered, if I move my phone so that I cannot see the, con uh, uh, the uh, marker also, whether my content is visible to me or the content get disappeared, then it is called as uh, extended tracking. If it is visible, even if I move uh, uh, my uh, focus from that marker, even if I am able to view from uh, quite little distance then it is uh, having an extended tracking if not it, it does not having an extended tracking so uh, based on extended tracking uh, almost everything have except 8 wall and yeah this and device are is that a major criteria using which you can choose uh, the thing well, uh, 8 wall and yeah this works uh, in almost a browser in 90 percent of the mobile browsers but the thing is uh, 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 it works on almost 100% of the phone which is available right now in all the hands but the thing is it will be little lag in the latest mobile phones so based on the performance this is a thing which I thought of addressing you uh, yeah uh, this is in short about the things and or maybe uh, uh, I'm stop sharing my screen so uh, this is uh, uh, about how to choose your uh, I am summarizing my session right now uh something like uh, the i said about types of ai i spoke about how to choose your ai development framework or tools and domain specific market predictions in ai and that is the area which i have covered prashant would cover getting started with spark ai in the uh, upcoming part of the session so uh, so uh, we spoke so about market based markerless uh, in in ai filter you can have you have features like market based markerless is having Superimposed, uh, it is partially having only face detection and hand tracking is available. Location based does not have in uh, uh, Spark AR. So we sp sp spoke about this and market predictions of uh, uh, AR, uh, that is what I'm speaking about. And AR framework engines, I spoke about little uh, briefly about AR uh, thing. Uh, and based on development languages also, you can choose this, yeah. This is my ideology and I'll be uh, switching my session to uh, I'll be switching my sessions uh, to uh, Prashant right now. Hello. Yeah, I made you as a ah. uh, presenter, Prashant. Hey, Santosh. That was yeah, a great I... session, by the way. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, I was thinking of keeping that uh, guess the gibberish session. Surprise. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, happy evening, everybody. So, the basic thing of creating an AR filter is first, uh, we just need to have an idea of what we are going to do. As this is just the gibberish, we need to have the elements like uh, what are the elements that are going to be used in the 
filter in in guess the gibberish you have the intro image and then the questions answers and the timer which is an optional one and the second one is hello uh, santosh actually am i sharing the screen uh, i'm not able to see your screen uh, oh so one second is it visible now yeah yeah okay the basic of uh, first we need to have a basic idea then it is like uploading it uh, in which platform you are going to upload it for example if you are going to upload it in snapchat you have to use uh, lens studio for it and if it is for instagram or facebook you have to use spark or for it and if you are going to create a separate app uh, which is fully uh, dependent on augmented reality you have to use game engines like uh, unity or uh, unreal then i'll show you the basic spark i think this is the spark ar this is the tool which is used for creating uh, facebook and instagram filters they these things are the presets uh excuse me santosh is my cursor visible yeah yeah your cursor is visible okay yeah. uh these are the presets while starting to work in spark ar you could just go with the presets and learn from the hierarchy table i'll tell you what a hierarchy table is and uh, uh, the pre uh, if there are any developers here the presets are like uh, it is like the stack overflow you could take a code from there change it and then upload it in the same way you could use this change the elements or assets in it and upload it as a new filter we'll go with the blank project and then uh, about the assets uh, for the gibberish it is like you have to create questions and uh, answer sequence it is like if uh, if the first if the first question is this uh, is a uh, is it visible that it is like 1q 2q 3q for the first question the answer should be also in the same order like 1a 2a 3a for the first question for 1q the answer should be 1a like that and for the timer it should be in the reverse order for example if uh, i'm i'm going to use 10 seconds and i should keep my first one as the 10th second and my while saving it i should save it as second the ninth one should should be saved as the second one so this is how the assets are created the assets can be created in any basic uh, 2d designing softwares like uh, photoshop illustrator or i use adobe xd for it so this is the spark ar interface this is the preview window where you can see exactly how the output looks like and this is the hierarchy window while using a preset you can check it over here and learn new things for example how they have assigned it, it basically works on a parent child relationship you could check here like which is under which which is a child of which parent like that you could check here and learn new things and then uh first of all uh, we should add a face tracker to it a face tracker is nothing but how a snapchat uses your bitmoji bitmojis it uses plane tracking as santosh uh, said uh, a plane tracker tracks the plane and keeps the object on top of it a face tracker is in the same way tracks your face and we'll add a plane to it and this one is the title it is like guess uh, guess the gibberish or gibberish something like that and the materials over here here is for adding the material you could just rename it and then to uh, import the file you have to click here like choose file and i have already created a title so it will appear on it and it will be not in a correct scale you could just uh, rescale it by clicking on the title and the shortcuts are e is for positioning r is for rotation and t is for scaling first i'll uh, we actually we cannot position it while it is in movement so we have to pause it and then position it according to the place where you need it you could scale it in any axis like x y and z until uh, you feel like it is okay 
Uh, and I need the questions and the answers to appear at exactly the same position. So that I'm just duplicating it two times and changing it as question. And I cannot also use the same material for this. So you could create a new material. Okay, uh, as uh, as the title was a single image, you could have uh, imported it directly clicking on the material in the texture box. And the questions and answers have three different variants. It is like a sequence. So you have to add an animation sequence first. Name it as questions. In the choose file, you have to go to question and select all of them. You'll get it in the textures. And do the same for the answers. Okay, uh, then for the timer, the timer should be placed separately. Uh, before that, I'll just assign the materials to it. You could assign the textures over here. The animation sequence is created, can be assigned over here. And now uh, for the timer part, you need to add a new plane to it. And you have to again reposition it where it has to be. Okay, I think this will be fine. Then uh, the timer is also an animation sequence. But the thing which I have said to like save it in the reverse order is that uh, because it plays as a sequence, it is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. And I have not used 10 here. Because if I use 10, what will happen is after 1, 10 will be taken into account, then 2 will come. So it will be like 10, 1, 9, like that the sequence will start running. So I have used 90 over here. I'll just add another animation sequence for the time off. Okay, this is the basic thing of importing assets into the Spark AR. And next is the logical path. There is a thing called patch editor in uh, Spark AR, which allows you to like, like control what happens. So first I'll drag the camera into it. Gibberish works this. Almost all of you would have tried it. After you start recording only, the gibberish will start working. So, after the... Uh, uh, hello, Santosh, is it uh, visible? Hello? Yeah, Prashant, yeah, Prashant, it's visible. Yeah, Prashant, it is visible, yeah. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Uh, actually, uh, you would have seen a gibberish filter, right? First, while you start recording it, uh, only after uh, recording starts, it's like after like two seconds of recording only the question starts appearing. So uh, these are called nodes. Uh, a delay node is used. A delay node is used to like a delay node is used to like uh, delay the time. It, 
it is like it delays the seconds and then these are like making it uh, visible so i'm going to use it here you could import the properties into the patch editor okay what i have to do is it is like i have to display the timer only after 2 seconds means i'll just link it to it and the answer is the last part the question should all also be displayed after 2 seconds and the title uh, it should it should like vanish after 2 seconds and the question should appear so i'm using a basic not node and now uh, the answer should be delay uh, displayed after 10 seconds so i'm using a delay node i'm giving it a time of 10 seconds and this is the and this is the basic structure for this and now to randomize it and make the timer work properly uh, first we will check how the timer works you have to use a pulse node a pulse node is nothing but uh, it sends a normal sig signal if the video recording is started it will send a signal then a switch node is used put on it on and from a uh, loop animation is used and the duration of it is uh, 10 seconds and uh, the loop the loop is something which uh, the same frame will appear again and again the progress is like it will go to the next frame so a frame transition is used there are total of uh, 10 frames that is the 10 images that are going to be used for the countdown and uh, the animation sequence has to be oh i forgot to tell you that as it has to be randomized the questions and answers the animation sequence should be allowed to randomize first and then uh, if you are on instagram or facebook you have to use uh, no compression in your uh, in your elements actually that is for the quality of the assets that you are using and then uh, uh, for telling you about the materials uh, all materials converted to flat type uh, it is nothing but a standard material is one uh, which reflects light a physical base is used for uh, something like uh, uh, almost a realistic to give a realistic look a physical base render will be used and flat is like it is used for most of the 2d objects so it does not get affected by light or anything and face paint is uh, basically the for example if you are gone for csk matches you would draw something on your face like that you can do it with it what is this is uh, if you can see here there will be a, a reflection over the edges more it will retain the reflection along with the texture that is what it does blender is it mixes texture with colors that's all and to bring in the animation sequences i'll just select everything it is like current frame you will bring in the current frame of it time how it works is i have connected it to here it works like 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that it goes on first thing is that 10 second one is that 9 like that it works and coming to the randomization part first of all uh, it should uh, we we should take the run time into account a run time is nothing but after you start playing it will take the seconds it will be a scalar value you have to change it to an offset value uh, offset changing scalar to offset it is like a calculation you can check it out in google and each and every time the filter has to be restored again uh, reset again and again so that you you will you will join it with the video recording and uh, the pulse will automatically be, be created and next is the less than less than it is nothing but uh, within uh, it takes the value like 
before three seconds like that it is for basically randomization i'm not gonna do like a uh, change the uh, change the sequence as i did in timer so i am giving i am doing i am enabling the value as zero and i don't want to progress like the timer so i am looping it to a random and as i have a total of three questions i'll enter the value three here if you are going to do it with uh, more number of questions you can enter the same value here and then next is round round is nothing but uh, it rounds of the value like uh, for example 1a 2a 3a that is first frame second frame third frame in the question sequence so what round does this it rounds of the value like 1 2 3 and less than use here is we have only three questions and it will be less than the three frames itself So I'm connecting the round to the question and the answer should be uh, by the same way delayed after 10 seconds. So I'm using a delay node. And connecting it to the answer. So this is the basic patch editor for, uh, for the gibberish. If you try it in the same way, you will get to know. But uh, in the starting stage, you could go on with trying with the presets so you could uh, get to know what a hierarchy is and how wh what affects what like that and this is the basic thing of a gibberish and you could have you could ask like uh, uh, here in this uh, preview window you will show the final output as the video recording has to be done it won't be showed here it will it is the it is like the while you select the filter what it will show first that will only be displayed over here you can like test it on your device like you could send it to your instagram camera or facebook camera uh, basically like while you are setting up a spark ar account it will ask you to link these accounts to it so if you, you can set it to your uh, send it to your instagram camera and check it and how to upload it uh, upload it is uh, it is like okay fine i'll show you the output of this the output will be like this if you follow that Actually, ignore my face, but this is the concept. Like this, you'll get the filter if you follow the same thing. You could also do changes in timings, questions, randomization, anything. All that depends on the patch editor notes. And to upload it, uh, you have to like, it will be already linked to your account. You just have to check the size requirements. Uh, it is good to keep a size below 5 MB. So, and it is like you can export the file and upload it uh, separately or you can upload it from here directly. If you click upload, it will start uploading. And a small fact is that you could get your... Uh, lens uh, that is snapchat filters easily approved than spark ar filters uh, in spark ar you have some policies like you shouldn't use a static text some things like that Uh, this is the Spark AR Studio. Here you can manage effects. You could manually upload it. it like uh, you could publish an effect, and uh, you could take the. I'll show you. Here there is an export file. You can take the export file and add it separately over here. You can choose for Facebook or Instagram camera the effect, and then if you submit it, uh, actually, uh, Spark AR has some policies like it should not have static text, like there or not. 
if everything is cleared it will get uploaded to your instagram account and that's it is there any questions or something hello prashant ah oh. prashant uh, can you yeah. speak about uh, uh, what are the other things you can do with uh, you don't need to showcase something but you can say what are the other things which is possible by spark ai yeah other things are like uh, you could create face filters changing the background uh, for example you would have uh, seen like in photoshop changing the background is a bit difficult thing you have to like exactly mask it but in spark ai it is like very easy you could like just uh, select the face tracker it automatically tracks your body and face and the background could be automatically changed like i showed you in the animation sequence you could create animation sequence of images and make it play in the background so you will be alone and the background will be changing automatically yeah uh, and, and then 3d objects uh, 3d objects and 3d animations could be inserted into uh, spark ar like uh, for example uh, there is there was a preset right uh, the cooling glass it yeah, is you can uh, open some presets thing. you can open some presets and show them actually uh this is what i said as the hierarchy window you could uh, see here and itself learn it is like in the face tracker they have attached and we we have attached the uh, we have attached like uh, image into it and here you, they have attached a 3d object it also works as the same thing but in this you have to use a face occluder also a face occluder is nothing but it tracks like if you is it Is it visible, bro? It is. It tracks yeah, your yeah. face. There is. There will be a shape like your face. Ah, uh, and you could exactly position it where you want, like that. Yeah, yeah. And it is like creativity. You could use water. Ah, uh, you could use for like retouch. Ah, uh, actually, there was a thing called. I. Why is not audible? Uh, Oh, your voice is not audible, Prashant. Hello. Yeah, your voice is not audible, Prashant. Yeah, it is audible right now. Yeah. Okay, okay, bro. Where did I leave? Ah, uh, I was saying about the face occluder after that. Ah, uh, uh, face occluder after that. Uh... uh in the beauty uh, industries also uh, augmented reality is used like for changing the color of lipsticks or changing eyelashes or something like that you can use spark ar in that field also yeah yeah uh, okay and in the uh, gaming industry augmented reality can be used in a very good way uh, most of the kids nowadays are sitting in the same place and playing augmented reality can like with using their phone they can run around places to catch for example like that pokemon uh we could use uh balloons around us and go and make them tap it like that we could make them physically active also using augmented reality for the kids it will be fun okay uh okay uh one uh, can you make me as a presenter yeah yeah so is my screen visible is my screen visible no bro no bro okay. uh is my screen visible right now yeah bro yeah uh, so uh, to add a point the points of uh, prashant uh, i'm not going to do develop something or something like that but i'm going to show certain things for example if i go to a uh, patch editor here uh, for that matter so i'm opening a patch editor uh, i'm opening the patch editor for example uh, if you go into the interaction part uh, you, you would have seen right if you open your mouth uh, then it, there'll be 3d animation coming in your ar filter for example you would have used multiple ar filters uh, uh, throughout this years right so 
for example there is some interactions available for example if i click the blink interaction bro, bro you are not audible okay so i'm going to am i audible right now ah oh, yeah bro yeah so uh, if you uh, in patch editor there are multiple options available and uh, not just patch and you can also create some javascript based codes also available in here so uh, for certain customization you can uh, do coding also uh, due to have a limited time we have not go gone into coding part of it but you can do uh, that also uh, this tool is designed in a way that it suits both for a, a designer or a developer if you are a designer and you want to create more creative filters you can do that uh with uh, limitations uh, but if you are a developer there are uh, you you should just follow the guidelines other than that you can do anything of uh, your imagination so that is one more thing so here uh, as i was saying if you go to patch editor there is some multiple interactions if i click interaction you can see something like this right um uh, so for example see that there is a interaction called as blink there is a interaction called as eyeball no head so something like i have to insert a face Uh, when the face is detected then uh, if i am if i am blinking then i have i can enable any of the 3d models or images as something like a prashant uh, showcase to you uh, uh, for example uh, i am adding some object or something like that uh, i am adding a 3d object uh, or a plane or something like that then uh, that can be enabled on this uh, format for example uh, if i am going to uh, this then i can disable this thing based on this inputs or something like that so there are multiple interactions which can be done easily using uh, existing patch editor itself for example eyebrow slow head eyebrow rise happy face it can also detect whether your face is happy sad or something like that then it can add a, a content on top of it something of that sort so object tap and mouth open and left eye closed Uh, so these are the multiple interaction which is available predefined uh, and that is one thing which i thought of adding you and other than that uh, uh, these has multiple other features something like uh, uh, i can add uh, uh, something like an image tracker uh, and i can add a content on top of it uh, for example if i scan a book i should have a 3d animation coming out of it and dancing or something of that sort and other than that we have another options like uh, uh not just face interaction there are multiple other options uh, also available here so that is what i thought of adding you uh, uh, other than what prashant have said so uh, so there are multiple things which can be done using things and face landmarks so uh, for example if i want to have a glass which is uh, automatically associating with my eyes or something of that sort uh, or if, uh, on a cheek uh, prashant if you have a video of that uh, a uh, face filter which we have done for tinai talkies you can show that and uh, if possible that will be helpful so uh, so you can have a face filter on a cheek or chin or eyeball or eyebrow eyelid uh, for example as i said the eyebrow uh, some uh, as prashant said a good example of uh, uh, makeup apparel or something of that sort can be with something like a lipstick or something like that right so you can have a eyebrow of different uh, shadings or something like that and eyelid nose forehead and everything so so these are the landmarks so that uh, you can uh, map it stating that this should be position in this place or something of that sort animation you have uh, uh, you can control the animation when an animation should open and other things and when the audio if you open a mouth there should be a separate audio need to be played or something of that sort that can also be done here so uh, yeah uh, for ec sake we showcase the patch editor uh, uh but if uh, if it is not that way you can also add your own uh, script here you can see here a script or a texture or material or something of that sort so that is also possible that is uh, i thought of adding you fresh uh, you can continue if you have something to add yeah uh hello yeah uh, prashant you can uh, continue if you uh, want to add anything maybe i can make you as a presenter uh yeah one second bro
Hello, bro. I'm audible. Uh, are, yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay, bro. I I have just uh, two examples. Yeah. Uh, your screen is not visible, Prashant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sir. Is it visible, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, actually, it is like you could uh, create the cool filters. Like you could not only detect a single face, you can detect two faces like that using the same filter. And then yes. this is what uh, Santos Bro said for that uh, face yeah, paint. Actually, can, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is positioned in like, your cheek and or something. I like had, uh, yeah, and uh, to add it for the beginners. Uh, it is like you could just start on with the presets you will get to know and there are a lot of tutorials in youtube you just start on with the presets available you will get to know like what is what what is a face tracking you you could just try new new things what is a plane tracking in the in the presets itself it will be available just uh, send it to your uh, instagram camera check it what happens change some little things and then again uh, send it to your instagram camera check what happens it is the best way to learn you could just start creating new things the creativity is yours you could do anything with it so bro i'll uh, change or i'll stop sharing my screen yeah uh, so uh, are we going for question answer session yeah yeah uh, uh, i think uh, divya has answered uh, asked the question can you put in a more uh, detail on how we are uh, be helpful in marketing? Yeah, uh, marketing in the sense, uh, right now we are, uh, uh, the AR filter is highly used by the marketers and other things. For example, uh, why marketing people start using AR is the reason is like, uh, in uh, consider the evolution of marketing before it was saying something like it was something on the papers. So the interaction is like just reading or viewing things. Then it is like uh, it came as a, a video based ads on TVs, YouTube, etc. where the interaction is like you can hear the audio, you can see the audio and you can emote to that audio. That is the thing uh, which is possible previously. But uh, consider the uh, Tinei Toki example uh, the uh, uh, Prashant said and uh, showcase and uh, uh, consider another cooling glass effect which is developed for our own brand, uh, one of our own brand or something of that sort. So where uh, there is a uh, one thing is like you are uh, you are getting into that brand or you are getting into the aspect of the brand. For example, you are interacting with the brand indirectly. Uh, you are engaging with the brand. For example, the tattoo of the brand is on your face. So uh, so you are getting into the another dimension of marketing. So marketing people have started using AR filter in a larger way. So the interactivity is also three dimensional. Before it is just ear on, it is uh, just view. But uh, making yourself attached to a brand is the one thing which is uh, AI filter is providing. So this creates more emotions towards a brand, more uh, ability towards a brand. So that is the reason why uh, people start using AI filter for marketing or something of that sort. And uh, someone asked, is, should I need to buy Spark Air? I think Prashant answered it. Yeah, it is not need to be bought. It is free for all. Yeah, so, I yeah. answered that, bro. Uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, you can feel free to ask that uh, uh, thing on the uh, filter or something, uh, on the question and answer session. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put up a way. Uh, if uh, if someone has raised, you can raise hands and you can also start interacting through voice if you are uh, feeling tough to. Uh, have a question and answer a type. Uh, if you have something, you can uh, add things on the. Anything? 
I can write some fans of Uh, that mean uh, we can proceed with that? Uh, something like that. If there is no questions, and uh, I think we can uh, uh, we can end up the session. Uh, out next, uh, is it fine? Uh, if there is no questions, can we end up the session, or uh, can we wait for? Some? Do you have something to add? No, it's fine, I guess, as we are not getting questions for past two minutes, so we'll wind up the session. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Santosh and Prashant, for giving such a nice session. So yeah, for all those who have missed certain parts of session due to our network issues and all, we'll be uh, giving out a recorded session through our YouTube official YouTube channel, Mozilla TN's official YouTube channel, as well as in VR service uh, official sites. Yeah. So you will receive a mail from us, post-event email, within days, maybe by Sunday evening or something, you will send out our post-event email, uh, in which we'll be mentioning the links where you can access the recorded session. So okay. thank you once again, guys, for attending the session. And thanks a lot, Prashant and uh, Santosh, for accepting our invitation and giving out such a great session. Thank you. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, i like to thank Mozilla team for organizing a good event and uh, making it possible. And one thing which I like to add is like I uh, uh, VRCV uh, team has uh, uh, done a, uh, has uh, has uh, uh, benefited a lot from Mozilla so far. Yes, we have started our AR and VR journey using Mozilla. Uh, we we are not uh, Unity or uh, Unreal guys. Uh, for a uh, couple of years back, we are just uh, Mozilla guys and uh, we developed uh, almost all the AR VR uh, products and uh, services. We have developed this uh, through Mozilla. In the beginning of our journey so I, I think this is a wonderful time to uh, be back in the community and uh, uh, spread the information across the community so that the community can benefit so first of all thanks for giving this uh, great opportunity for us yeah. thank you it's our pleasure too thank you yeah. Prashant, anything you'd like to add, Prashant? Bro? Uh, Prashant, uh, anything you'd like to add or something like that? Uh, yeah, uh, if they are using any, uh, if they are using or trying new filters, they could like uh, tag us in their posts and we'll also let us know. We'll be happy, right? They have uh, uh, yeah. something. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Ognisha uh, can share the ha hashtag or something like that if you are trying that Mozilla. Uh, uh, they may, uh, uh, can we repost it uh, or places so that uh, if a people are trying our AR filter, uh, they can sh share it using our hashtag and we can reshare it. Yeah, uh, is it fine now, sir? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can share that uh, hashtags and other things uh, 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 on the, the broadcast mm -hmm. message so that people, yeah, yeah, even in the email so that they can share it. Yeah. So someone is asking, what is the maximum file size? I think Prashant would, uh, would answer. Yeah, Prashant. bro, I answered that. Actually, maximum file size in uh, uh, Spark here, it is not that much restricted. But in the fact that, uh, hello? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can uh, that is what, bro. Maximum file size in uh, Instagram, I mean, in uh, Spark here, it is not that much restricted. But while using Lens Studio, uh, it is like a very low, it is, it is like uh, 8 MB. You, can, you cannot add uh, even 0 0.1 after that. But the good practice is using a five below using the file size like below five MB will be good, and yep. mostly uh, it won't exceed that. Well, uh, if you're doing some like uh, Snapchat, a uh, Snapchat games or something like that, it may exceed than eight MB or something like that. Uh, we have made a small game kind of thing also where uh, the MB is not more than 5 MB. Uh, and one more thing is like uh, while exporting, it will also compress certain things so that it has made it uh, look easy. And and that patch editor kind of thing is not uh, uh, coming out of this part of this. So uh, it is uh, compressed. So, uh, But it is good practices to keep below 5 MB. Yeah, that is what Prashant says. Okay.
Anything else? Oh, no, bro. There are no questions also. It is like, has the organizer need anything to say or it is like winding up the session? No, let's wind up the session then. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you, guys. Thanks for attending and thank you for attending. Okay, thank you. <laughs>